Well, good morning to all of you. If I did not have appointments all this afternoon, I would have all my jeans because I know it's important uh, to be comfortable when you attend Ed Camp. Now, I must confess, this is the first Ed Camp I have ever attended. believe that it will not be my last. <laughs> uh, this morning as I was driving over here, I thought, wow, that's something new I had not heard before. And then I was, as I was driving into the parking lot, I thought, wow, that's something new that I've not heard before. And then I looked at the paper um, after I got in the parking lot and I read something and I thought, boy, I didn't know that. But did you know that we now have a global standard for releasing music? Now we have Release Fridays, and nations across the world have come together to say that we will only release new music on Fridays. Now that's causing an uproar in some places, but that is new. And then the other thing that I read in the paper was that Duke scientists uh, have done an, experience, an experiment to connect the brains of rats to predict weather at RDU. I thought, I hadn't heard that before. <laughs> and so as we look toward um, our educating our one and a half or almost 1.6 million children in our state, we have a lot to do to examine our traditions, to determine those things that will move us forward and to forget about those traditions that keep us in the past. And I think of one in my own family. It has uh, when I was growing up, it was always a tradition for us to go to my grandmother's and grandmother's, grandfather's house to have lunch on Sunday after church. And every Sunday, it seemed as if my uncle Claude, who is now deceased, would ask me this question. June, what did you learn in school this week? And I would tell him. And he would always say, or at least that's what my memory tells me, he would always say, well, June, when I was your age, I learned such and such and such and such. Did you? Well, growing up, I decided that I would never say that to a young person. I would never say that because I just candidly just got tired of his saying that all the time. When I was your age, when I was your age. So I kept that promise to myself until my nephew came to visit me over the summer. Uh, he was going to band, not band camp, uh, to golf camp just down the road here at uh, NC State. And one day as we were driving to golf camp, I said to him, uh, John Robert, uh, what did you learn in social studies this past year? So he told me what he had learned. And then I said, well, John Robert, when I was your age, <laughs> I had to memorize the presidents of the United States, did you? And his reply was, June, I did not. However, you have to remember that there are a lot more presidents now <laughs> than when you were my age. <laughs> so I still kept that promise. But I'm sharing that story with you is that any time we break tradition or any time we try something new, we always have our skeptics, our naysayers, and our champions. Even though we may have our naysayers and we may have uh, those who are skeptic, we sh that should not prevent us from moving forward. And I think of attending an unconference rather than a conference. I think of all the possibilities of your personalizing your learning of your being, I wish I could think of a better word right now, organic in your learning, you to be in charge of what you know and what you do. And this unconference ed camp really is a way to break some traditions that no longer have any purpose. Uh, and I go back to my own family. It was a tradition in my family for the men to eat first and then the women to eat last, I mean second, and then the children to eat third. Any of you grow up in a family like that? A few. Well, as being the only uh, grandchild at the time, I got to eat with the men. 
But after my grandfather and grandmother died, my aunt announced at a Thanksgiving meal, she said, we are going to kiss this men eating first and women second and children third goodbye. And without any question, we moved forward with all of us eating together. So as we move forward in North Carolina, where we really want to personalize education for every single child, we need to have those supports. We need to have those teachers prepared. We need to have the support with our uh, principals and central office staff. And as we move forward with a new generation of testing, where we want to have assessments embedded in instruction, we know that we will have some naysayers. In fact, how many of you heard what the State Board of Education did yesterday? Oh, yay, there are just a few of you, so I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yesterday, the State Board of Education approved our moving forward with a proof of concept where we will take end of grade tests, divide them into smaller tests to be given throughout the year so that we can actually provide feedback to the teachers and the students along the way rather than waiting until the end of the year to have an end of grade test. Now, believe me, there are going to be some naysayers and there are going to be people saying, why are you doing that? And what will it accomplish? They're all good questions, but it's worth a try. Because when we think about what is the purpose of testing, the purpose of testing should be to take a snapshot of how our students are doing statewide and to give important feedback to students and teachers about how to become better. So we'll have some naysayers, we'll have some great questions. Uh, we will do this in about 50% of the schools in fifth grade and sixth grade. And if you are at one of those schools, we ask for your uh, um, we ask for your feedback. It will involve about 9,000 students in the state. And what we gain from that will help us determine where we go next. As I see it, we're on this bridge between 20th century practices of testing and what we can do in the 21st century of having assessments embedded in instruction. And this year, anybody here in elementary education? All right, if you haven't taken advantage of this, um, we are offering 30,000 subscriptions to what is really a forerunner or is artificial intelligence software to help improve reading achievement of children who are in the transition classes. And we are soliciting school districts to use that. And that is a forerunner of how assessment and instruction can be embedded so you don't know the difference. I love the argument that people in the department had when we saw that software demonstrated. The instructional people said, well, you know, that's more of assessment than instruction. And the uh, testing people said, oh, no, that's more about assess, I mean, more about instruction than it is testing. So I thought that was a good sign, a good sign that is integrated and it's hard, as I say, to get the testing peas out of the vegetable soup. So anyway, uh, I am uh, eager to stay with you for a while to see how, what you're doing. I think it's in exciting. One thing I really like about this meeting is that I typically go to conferences in Greensboro. How many of you have ever been to a Greensboro conference? Practically everybody, that's a great place to go. But I know I have eaten chicken at that uh, center at least 25 different ways. <laughs> and so I'm glad you didn't have chicken <laughs> as I came in. But have a great day. Oh, you having chicken this afternoon? <laughs> Well, barbecue, that counts. <laughs> but thank you for allowing me just to spend a little time with you. And I see you as pioneers. And I know that you will be able to spread the word about how to take uh, charge of your own learning. Thank you. <laughs>